What is going on everyone? It is James aka the Comic Raider and we are back for episode 2, issue 2, whatever you want to call it of what I read this week. Uh, so this, I'm pretty proud. Pretty proud of myself here. Um, this is what we got. Now technically speaking, 6 of these are like Spawn 350. But um, So it's just the same cover because I'm going to go over all those. But... Regardless, um, I believe my count was at 18 books this week, which is insane for me, um, considering that I went from like not reading for a good chunk of time to now 18 in the second week. So um, if you want to know kind of the personal reasons why I'm doing this, please check out uh, episode number one for a quick little debrief of why I wanted to do this other than just simply telling you what I'm reading. Let's go ahead and get into it because we have a lot to cover. I'm gonna start with Ghost Machine uh, issue number one. Now again, these are not all things that came out this week. This is just what I read this week. So Ghost Machine issue number one. Um, I did enjoy this. This is like a new uh, what group that has gotten together and kind of making their own little universe here and um with geiger and red coat uh, i think one of them was called rook it was a bunch it was almost like an anthology it was kind of just going over all these different characters i did enjoy most of them um some of them i think like the family stuff i was i mean don't get me wrong i love fast and furious i'm all about family but um those issues were just kind of whatever um but the geiger one was cool the red coat one was cool I believe it was called Rook. It was like the guy with the pig. Um, that one seems like a cool universe. Um, the Northerner, I don't remember if he got his own, but he basically uh, seems like a very interesting character at least. And then, uh, yeah, I think this chick is in the Rook series. Forgot what her name was, something wolf. This episode is going to put my memory to the test which is again the reason why I'm doing this in the first place um, but there's like so much that I read that I'm gonna have to try and remember so this is gonna be a little tough but yeah this was cool uh, I don't I mean I'm probably gonna read a lot of them I'm not gonna be collecting them I'll read them online if I'm being a hundred percent honest because um, it's just that's a lot to pick up and I don't know if I'm gonna truly enjoy them all uh, next up we have King Spawn issue number 30 uh, there was two covers for this. I decided for a lot of my books, instead of like trying to go back and start from issue one or like issue whatever, I'm just going to kind of jump on from where it's at right now. So in this case, right, I'm going to, well, I've been reading King Spawn, but let's just say, for example, I hadn't, hadn't read issue one or any of them. I would read this one and then I'm going to read issue one and kind of get to a point where I've caught up. To, to whatever issue is now current at the time that's kind of my idea here so I figured this way it keeps me you know reading what I'm grabbing every week from my pull and uh, so anyways this one was cool it was basically Spawn and Wanda um, they're traveling you know he's in hell trying to get to the spot where this takes place before issue 350 so it's him speaking with her and trying to get to the point where he's going to fight for the throne she's trying to tell him you know don't take it because it's going to corrupt you he's basically explaining that he doesn't have a choice because he can't let sin or uh clown get it because then they're going to basically destroy everything um and then it kind of just essentially leads ends with like okay uh read issue 350 to kind of see how this all kind of ends but it was still cool just you know a cool little issue of the two of them together it actually did provide some backstory um he kind of gave like a little explanation of like his history with wanda and his history with her being killed and why she was killed and him killing mount boja and just like a little backstory it was also her telling him like you need to move on i love you but not like that and you need not like that anymore we have to move on with our i don't even know if it's lives because they're both dead we need to move on with our dead i don't know um but anyways so next is going to be scorched issue number 26 this also has two covers here this one is actually really really nice it's carlo barberi who's doing the spawn uh run artwork anyways and this one uh, she spawn redeemer 
and a medieval spawn. They run up into a church and they introduce themselves and it ends up being to haunt. And they're basically telling him like, look, we need you. And then these two other characters like attack them and they have to fight off all their demons. And then the two characters were going to attack them. But then Spawn ends up showing up, basically murking everybody. And then he's like, you know, that war that I told you guys was coming, like it's here. I need you right now. And then it says, read issue 350 to see what's going on there. So um, obviously it takes place before, you know, the team was put into the battlefield and all that kind of stuff. So, <clears throat> but still cool nonetheless. Um, then we have, this is, I, I kind of have been posting a little bit on my Instagram about this, um, but a lot of these covers, uh, this, so this is Gunslinger issue number 28. This one is amazing. Really, really cool. The skull in the background, the everything. This one is just badass as hell this is a great freaking cover and a lot of these series in the spawn universe have been getting outstanding covers that i think a lot of people are just passing up because they're you know maybe they don't care about spawn or the universe but artwork wise these covers have just been insane and this one is amazing cover here so as far as the issue goes gunslinger is with a friend from his past that he's been rolling with from the last couple issues from what I understand um and then the friend has kind of been brainwashed by somebody else and he's like you know uh, now I'm turning on you because I've been told that you murdered my family and he's trying to like explain to him that uh, no I haven't they kind of have their little fight I guess and then I don't think anybody like pops in it basically just says like you know check out spawn 350 it's gonna affect everybody Meaning it's going to affect Gunslinger as well. I don't think anybody pops up at the end of this. But um, this is definitely one that I will 100% admit was a little bit tougher. Just randomly picking up issue 28 and reading. Because there was definitely like what's been going on with him and this other character has been going on for a couple issues now. So not one that I would suggest jumping in on. Um, but maybe the next issue because it will take place after 350 I guess so now um, let's go ahead and move on I said that I was you know gonna kind of like start my start reading from the books that I was picking up right now so like Batman is a great example I'm not gonna start from you know issue one although technically I mean I'm gonna be honest are we like issue one is like rebirth is that what issue number one of this series is because that's the case I have already read a chunk of this, but I also have missed a large portion of this. Um, I know Zdarsky starts around 122, 123, 125, somewhere around there. I am going to pick up from his start and then catch up to this point. But what was cool is this is a cool starting point for me. You know, it's a new section of the title. So you have the Joker year one, part one in issue 142, then part two uh, issue 143 and then Batman 144 which is Joker year one part three so this kind of went over as it states Joker year one although this is another one I will admit a little tough to follow for me not having read previously but I still really enjoyed it you know kind of going over Joker's origin in a sense but I believe that it's at well I don't believe I know because it does tie in together at the end it's going over two different time periods so like it's telling the Joker year one part and then it's also telling a current Batman uh story which is where like uh Joker's unleashed a toxin again and it's infected everybody and apparently it came from sound hearing the sound of I think it was his laughter um turns you into a, a, a Jokerized character so like the whole Bat family has been turned um, which you find out later but you know because he finds Catwoman she has covered up her ears so she can't hear so she's actually alive and safe she's been keeping the Bat family like in a prison cell so that they don't escape and hurt anybody or get hurt or anything like that um, but then as Batman is looking at them Joker sneaks up behind her takes off the earpiece and then she hears it and now boom she's instantly turned and then he opens the door and he lets all them out so then Bruce has to like kind of escape from them and fight them he gets away and then he basically, the Joker's like following him throughout all this as he's 
as he's finding the clues for what has happened and then what has caused it, the Joker's following him through all of this, like just watching him, you know? And then um, eventually he finds out that it was a bat, the sound of a bat that you can't hear, you know, their echolocation sonar. Um, that sound, that is the sound that snaps you out of the the trance. Um, but you can't hear it only. The, you know, the bats can and whoever has now been infected. So anyways, then he's able to unleash all the bats and then that kind of cures the whole city. But it makes Batman realize that he says at a certain point in here, like the Joker just did something and basically kind of helped me by leaving me specific clues. He just watched me and helped me beat his own joke, right? So the joke was, you know, to, to turn everybody into this and then just watched him and kind of helped him along as he then learned how to solve it. And so Batman's thinking like, like, I would not have solved this without him. How many times could he have just beat me? Like, he's that good. He could have just beat me at any time. And, you know, or that's what he's wondering. Meanwhile, it's telling a backstory of like his year one and um, crooked cops and all that kind of stuff. And that's kind of what intertwines because the clues of what happened at that time is what's allowing Bruce to find and remember things in, in current story that lead to him freeing them. But meanwhile, there's also like a part where Raz Al Ghul takes um, Joker under his wing and he basically trains the Joker by telling him like, look, I trained Batman, now I'm gonna train you. And then he's realizing like, this dude is amazing. And there's a really cool part where he tries to teach the Joker how to utilize different parts of him. And it was a really cool way of breaking down the Joker when you think of it like that. And then he eventually attacks Ra's al Ghul and Ra's al Ghul is just like, damn, I, this guy that I just created is amazing. I, I'm very impressed, but then he's also like, this guy's shit. Also, some of the artwork on here is insane. Look at this. That is, that that's like, um, you know what that is? That's Courage the Cowardly Dog. You remember Courage the Cowardly Dog? The, the homeboy that uh, would wait for him? Oh, here it is, here it is, here it is. Okay, the first version is he exceeds Bruce immediately, seeing the potential of the backups. First is the clown, then the demon. I don't believe in heaven or hell, but if I did, I think this man has existed for a millennia, tormenting humanity. The third is calm, like a black ocean at night, and like that ocean, and all that waits for you is cold death. And at this point, he's just like, damn, damn. He said, I'm, for the first time in my life, I'm finally awestruck. This was awesome. They're also going to jump into a brand new um, section storyline. Sorry, I keep calling them sections. They're going to jump into a brand new storyline after this. So it is a good time to for me to have jumped on to Batman. Um, this one, uh, I don't know, whatever. This was very random to jump into late. Um, there's a big gang war going on in New York City with uh, Tombstone's daughter versus someone else. Um, all these different characters being involved. There's tie-ins and all these different series that I'm not reading, so this didn't really make too much sense. I mean, it makes sense, but I can definitely tell that I'm missing the big picture. Okay, the next series is going to be... I didn't have my issue one, so I pulled issues two, three, four, five, and six. This is Daredevil. The new series that just started and this has been really good I do not care too much for these covers by John Romita jr. if I am being honest but I'm all confused here so I have been enjoying this run a lot this is taking place with he has come back and now he it, it kind of restarted so he didn't remember exactly who he was he's just basically father Mateo right now he's preacher priest and running the running the Catholic school and it's been a really good series so far artwork has kind of jumped around a little bit with different artists but when it's on point it is on point and it heavily is lying leaning into his faith which has been great because you know for some people they really like when it's daredevil and it leans into him as the attorney and him trying to balance all that this one is just strictly leaning into him trying to be daredevil as he's remembering who he is and him 
being the priest and the battle that he has with the two of these at the time. But it is heavily, heavily into that because, I mean, it even goes as far as the whole the series so far has been, you know, they've introduced some other characters like Doctor Strange and, and She-Hulk into it, but it is the seven sins, the seven deadly sins in a demon form taking over and controlling people in his life. And he doesn't realize it at first, but then when he does, he has to go up against them. And the way that he beats them is by saying a prayer to them, basically performing an exorcism. And so just there alone, you know, him saying this, him doing this exorcism in a sense, and him saying this prayer is just, you know, again, further leaning into the faith. And so I don't know that this series is for everybody. I am loving it. Uh, as a Catholic, as a man of faith myself, this has been a really refreshing take for me and has been very, very, very enjoyable. Plus, I love the whole Seven Deadly Sins thing that they're doing with it as well. So, highly recommend the new Daredevil run. Next, <clears throat> I wasn't going to get this, but I saw a bunch of people posting it and I didn't know what it was. I picked this up because Cyclops is my favorite X-Men, and I thought that this design was actually pretty cool, so I picked it up. Uh, it's actually now going to be a first appearance of a few different characters, I guess a couple really, um, him being one of them, Weapon 8, who is, yes, like a Cyclops looking, uh, it's Cyclops meets Iron Spider, because he has the Iron Spider type suit, and that part of the issue is really, really good. He goes up against Weapon X. It's an alternate universe, of course. So, goes up against Weapon X. Pins him up with the Iron Spider legs. <clears throat> and then just torches his ass. But at the time, Wolf Weapon X is telling him, like, you know, you're just a weapon. You don't even know who you are. And so then now he's trying to talk to his bosses, like, who am I? They're like, you know what, he, no, this is the, this is how it starts get his ass back out there on another mission to distract him. So they send him up against Weapon 1, who's Captain America, and he goes up against him, and then he's like, who am I? And the, and the guy in his ear is like, you have a target, take him out. And he's like, no, who am I? And Captain America is just beating his ass. He's like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take this beating, I'm gonna die if I have to, until you tell me who I am. And so as Captain America is like about to drop the shield, he's just like, fine, you're Peter, your name's Peter. And he's like, cool. Boom, catches the shield, and then takes one of those legs, right? Oh my goodness, that was awesome. Second story, don't really care about, it's a spider bite. The girl who does the VR, she uh, it was in the recent Miles Morales movie. Whatever, don't really care about that one. And then the third one was Spider-Man 2099, and then Madam Web jumps in and then tells him, like, you know, you need to put a team together because um, they're coming for us. And then he's like, all right, give me a day to figure it out. But then he gets kidnapped by what appears to be like the Sinister Six, almost looking like. You can kind of see a silhouette of Kraven. Um, I think Green Goblin, if I'm not mistaken. I know that Dr. Octopus is who grabs them. So, you know, and then it's going to lead into Web of Spider-Man and stuff like that. I don't know that I'm going to be getting into this whole series. Um, again, I just bought it because I saw everybody posting it. So I thought that meant something. And I love the character design. Turn out that first part was kind of cool, but will the rest of it be cool? No idea. Last reads, I read them online. Ultimate Black Panther, which was cool. Not as good as Ultimate Spider-Man, but Ultimate Black Panther was cool. You know, I really, I like the dynamic of him and Okoye, and then you have, uh, like, these robots attacking. This was what I read last week, so my memory's a little faint on this, but, like, these robots attacking villages, and then someone attacks them and takes all them out and then you find out that it's Killmonger and like I'm guessing this version of Storm or something like that and that was really really neat ends with a very important part that I won't go ahead and spoil but ends with a bang and then a declaration of war if I'm not mistaken so this series might be all right but Ultimate Spider-Man is definitely the highlight both one and two I read both of them and you know, just to get a fresh take on Peter, he doesn't have powers yet. They've been taken, you know, that that opportunity was taken from him to get bitten. It's granted to him by Tony. Uh, 
you know, I just highly suggest you read this for your own. I will just say, as a husband, as a father, I'm loving the dynamic with him and Mary Jane, and then him and May, his daughter, and then the son too. The personal life going well, besides the fact that he's missing out on what he feels like is something in his life, come to find out that it's being Spider-Man. I really loved the conversation that he has with Mary Jane, and you know, the way in which that dialogue was written was amazing. Uh, I really like in issue two, now that he is portraying to be Spider-Man, you know, how he's learning to be him, uh, going up against Shocker, getting beat, very funny, uh, it brought some levity to the, to the issue, and it's just been really awesome, I highly, highly recommend you are reading that one, that's gonna do it for me, I'm gonna get out of here, again, lots of reads, this is not sustainable for me with work and school. There's no way I'm going to be able to do this consistently, but I had a good week of reading. This won't happen all the time, but I do appreciate everyone tuning in for the long video. And let me know what you read. Let me know your thoughts below. Appreciate it as always. Take care and stay safe. Comic Raider is out. Deuces.